I'm so glad. I mean, I, my son is just 10 years old. And while I may be five foot three, my son is already well over my height at just 10 years old. Yeah. And you speak to me very personally in the idea of what it's like when you have to figure out how the world is going to see your child. And for the better part of many years now, we have fixated on the discussion about how police are seeing our mm. children, as if the only quote unquote conversations that black parents are having with their children is not about books, it's yeah. not about learning, it's not about love and the promise of a wonderful future, that it's always confined to police, but I gotta tell you, it often is about how the world at large sees that the fact that he was present at the door as any Amazon delivery or my Girl Scout daughter selling cookies may have been, something said, I'm so afraid as to shoot and aim to kill in the head. And as a mom, I am constantly struggling with how I explain this to my children and how I prepare them. Does it mean that I make them all the more courageous and all the more outspoken and brave and have the bravado? Or do I make them humble and a little bit softer so that they're perceived differently? Mm. That's not a decision I ought to have to make. And you know, one, one thing that I immediately think about is look, as reporters, we're oftentimes in the field, we actually have to go knock on the doors of a lot of these places in places that sometimes don't have a lot of black people. So I am stepping up onto this front porch and doing my job, but I know that I stand out, that I could be perceived as a threat. So I can tell you, whenever I ring a doorbell, just to take an extra precaution, I step almost all the way off the mm. porch. I look to my left and right, just in case someone comes to the door in the manner that, that we saw here. Because sometimes, as we saw in this case, there are no words, there, are no, there is no time for discussion, there is no opportunity, mm. as, as, as we have to do sometimes, to make someone feel comfortable through conversation especially as reporters. And I, and I think when I look at this case, obviously this is one that I followed closely professionally, mm -hmm. but you know, it, it's sometimes you have to take that reporter hat off when I examine kind of the scenario that, that this teenager w was put in. Omar, we watched you get arrested on yeah. television yeah, I was yeah, yeah. for doing nothing besides being present in this, at a scene as a reporter where I think you had a visible media pass, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. And there were other um, reporters there. Yeah, yeah, but you were singled out. Well, and, and that's, that I think is a, is a good example. And I'll, I'll take my reporter hat off for a second here to talk about that and to say that, you know, when it's happening to you in the moment, you're just trying to get through the moment because mm -hmm. you don't know what slight move is gonna trigger some reaction, some internalization that the, these officers or whoever might have had or community member may have had. And it wasn't until after I get back, one of our colleagues, Josh Campbell, he's a white, mm -hmm. white man, right, reporter, he was nearby and he said, you know, I, I just talked to the cops, told them who I was, they let me go about my business. And, and in that moment, those, those are moments that you cannot really put into words because it's been laid out for you in a sense. So what is the solution? Where do we go from here, Eric? Well, you know, I think America has a rich comfort uh, and really in, in just both being culturally and, and across institutions being comfortable in treating black children as subhuman uh, and really treating and seeing black humans, black people in this space uh, allows for people to lie or, or, or rely on the notion of I'm in fear and that it's just for people to cause harm to this population. Um, we were mentioning the, the height or the age of, of uh, adulthood. When you look at black boys and girls, uh, as early as 13 years old, that's when American society starts to look at black children as adults. I think there's a reckoning, that's the solution. There's a reckoning that needs to happen in America. And I believe the teams that I'm part of, the teams of other grassroots organizations, um, really pushing legislation, changing policy, changing how the landscape has been built um, to fundamentally shift um, and undo the legacy of white supremacy. That's what we're seeing. All right, Eric Cumberbatch, Omar Jimenez, Laura Coates, thank you for having that real raw conversation that is so needed. We appreciate it.